So uh, thank you, Manoj. Thank you, Diabetes India. Um, and I think before we start, uh, DTAC, which is happening 5th to 7th May, is the place to be because that is the future. Because insulin and timing range and CGMS is the future. You either work with the future or you will be become a lost entity. So I think that is there. Manoj is wearing a very beautiful tie. I'll ask him for his tie after the meeting. So I'm going to talk on biosimilar insulin, the need of the hour today. So thus, see, globally, there is a problem. You know, in some countries, access to insulin is a problem. And when we talk about access to insulin, access to insulin just doesn't mean availability of insulin. It also means the price of insulin. And it's the understanding of, you know, all the myths that we face along with insulin that is there in the market alongside this. And so, you know, Dr. Sanjay Basu from Stanford University said, current levels of insulin access are inadequate and more work needs to be done for it to be available across the world. Now, this is a very interesting slide. You see, when and between 2002 and 2013, the average price of insulin has nearly tripled. It's, you know, without naming any company or without naming any molecule. When I started practicing, you know, prescribed a basal insulin, patient doing well, patient's sugar is improving. Then suddenly I, the patient says, my cost has gone up. So the cost creeps up without your knowing because the companies will move 5%, 10%, 10%, 15%, and slowly the cost goes up and you suddenly feel the pinch or the patient suddenly feels the pinch. Oh my God, you know, this is a big budget that we are need to do. it. And so that needs to be kept into consideration as to the pocket size of India. Because yes, we are still a developing nation. India is a wide variety. We have Ambani's, but the vast majority of people are you know, doing treatment out of pocket, unlike Western countries. In Western countries, a lot of it, I was in the NHS, Professor Hanif has been here, I was his trainee, and a lot of it is NHS. NHS will pay for the all insulin, so the cost doesn't matter. And hence, the insulin companies which are bringing newer products are more focusing on the Western countries because they're making more money. Countries like India, they are focusing less because people are paying out of pocket and they are not bringing the price down. And this is where biosimilar insulin makes a huge role. If you look at the, as I said, innovator companies and to the far end of the slide, you can see they focus more on countries which are high income source. We, we fall in somewhere between low income to upper middle income somewhere. And I hope we'll move down and, you know, with uh, how India is progressing, uh, we would like the per capita income to go up and we shall be coming there. But their focus is very different. Hence, we need to actually force them to change their hands. It's like a poker game. You force the poker person who's sitting across the table to change his game plan. And that is what biosimilar insulins are doing in India. It is making the innovator molecules to actually change their game plan. I remember people coming to, and you know, when they promote coming and telling us, we want this and we want that. This is not our focus. Now the language has changed. Each language is changing. Because they realize that the biosimilars has forced them to cut their prices and make available insulin for all. Because that should be the mantra. Insulin should be available for all. No patient should die because of out of insulin, either because of pocket or because of availability. And that is, if you look at what we are doing in meetings or what we are talking about, it's a condition, it's a chronic condition. We are there to change lives. And it is very important that life-saving medications like insulin are, you know, the cost is kept at a bare minimum with quality alongside that should be there. Now, sorry, we went back to the slide. So people with diabetes who depend on life-saving insulin pay the ultimate price when it's not affordable to their pocket is lacking. So insulin should be accessible, available, and doctors can partner with the companies to supply in far-reaching areas for a company. I often give the phone numbers of the rep if it is not in the you know bigger cities, something remote, and they take the onus of supplying that. The onus is on us to actually help the patient get his insulin. I think you know the teams exist. Each pharma people, uh, you know, industry have their own medical representative area management. That is their job to support us, and we should utilize that resource for that insulin to be available uh, to that patient wherever he is, and he should not have a problem with the excess with the supplies. 
So when we talk about biosimilar insulin, what is a biosimilar insulin? There are certain key factors we should be bearing in mind. It should be highly similar to reference medicine, no clinical meaningful difference, and variability. Variability is a key mantra nowadays. We talk about CGMS, uh, we talk about variability, and variability of biosimilars should be kept within similar st standard limits, and, but it should be safe. So the balance is it should be effective as effective, but safety, do no harm, what we took about uh, of our Hippocratic Oath is very important. Safety is very important because insulin is a protein molecule. It's difficult to manufacture a protein molecule and difficult under stringent condition to produce a good quality. Every chief minister does not become Prime Minister Modi. So we know you need to have characteristics for that. And you have to go through a vigorous process to actually get that to that zone that should be there for that in mind. Now, you see, when a lot of tablets have become now available, generic drugs are available. And why is it not generic insulins are available rampantly? Because there's a key difference. If you look at generic drugs, they are smaller molecules chemically synthesized using the same active ingredient strength doses from root of administration. But biosimilar is as the key word out here is biological activity. They are active molecules, and hence, we have to be very careful when it comes to insulin, when we, which molecule which we are giving to our patient, because at the end of the day, we are there to prescribe for our patients to get his glycemia under control. No point prescribing water to a patient when you are prescribing insulin. You're prescribing insulin to bring his glycemic load. Already you have fought so hard to get him to insulin. It's a challenge because in India, insulin diabetes is not a medical condition, medical, social, psychological condition. What his barber told him in haircut that insulin will cause kidney problems is in the back of his mind. We want that first chance for that dose to be effective, to be, to be price should be affordable and dose should be effective for the patient. If you look at the price difference between biosimilar innovator molecule, there was a huge price difference and it was around 40% plus. And now the force of hand has made them reduce the price and it's still 25% more affordable than the innovator molecule. Now, Biocon's insulin approvals has been done globally. It is in US FDA, it is the first insulin to be given interchangeable designation in 2021. The word interchangeable is very clear. You just change the same dose swap to the inter innovator molecule. You don't need to do a reduction of dose because generally when I was in UK, we were taught when you move from one insulin to the other, you do a 10% reduction because you don't know the biological availability. Here, they've got a license with all the studies that you can just do a dose-to-dose -dose change with a roughly a 25% today's day a price reduction, which is there for all patients. This was started in EMA in Europe. They had led the way in biosimilar. Uh, insulins approval and FDA is caught up because biosimilars help us overcome two challenges. There are challenges which are because there are patients who can't afford the late insulinization, rise in complications, and with timely and affordable insulinization, a lot of these barriers are taken away. So, if it is so easy, if it is so easy, why doesn't everybody do it? Why why doesn't everybody been able to do it? Why doesn't a DTEC happen? everywhere in every city because it takes a lot of task to do it. There are certain procedures to maintain a quality standard meeting that needs to be done. There's a certain procedures to have a quality standardized insulin that has to be available in the market. And there are, because it's a very complex process, it requires expertise, extensive knowledge, an infrastructure, a comprehensive infrastructure that is available, a long incubation period, and a long-term strategy and commitment. It's like a marriage, it is not an affair. A marriage has to last a lifetime. Things will go up and down, but you hold your hand in marriage till we die. And that is where the commitment has to come from the company for a long-term commitment to produce a quality insulin that is there in biosimilar. And that is often not seen in various places. If you see the younger generation is always, you know, nowadays uh, a live-in relationship rather than a marriage. marriage so people who do marriage understand, who have been in marriage, will understand the, long, the value of relationship and the value of long-term quality relationship. See, because people have experimented. If you look at the insulin marvel, they experimented, but they, were, they had to be withdrawn because they just were not good enough. So, you know, not that people have not tried. They tried, and then it was, they were asked that, you know, you're not producing quality insulin. This will be detrimental to our patients. Please stop.
So having an FDA approval is a big thing. In India, we look up to FDA for everything. And when FDA says it's an interchangeable insulin, it, the word has some credibility. Because it's a long process, starting with analytical to preclinical to phase two and phase three and four studies, to understand, to give them the approval that it exists. Because if, even if you look at insulin gladitus, you see it's a protein molecule. Any protein molecule will have an immunogenic reaction. And it had high IL-6, it invoked a high IL-6, which was there with gladitus. So interchangeable data, only Biocon's insulin had it, the first approval. And this has been because a lot of studies, uh, Dr. Jyoti Dev is going to talk about the in-depth studies, but we have inscribed one, two, three, the global PKPD to hit the bullseye to get this approval, uh, which has been a long and daunting task. And I think I congratulate Biocon for doing that, for having the first biosimilar insulin that is there. And even we have, you know, if you look at the FDA Commissioner Janet Woodstock, he says, today is a change day, it's a day that will make a change in the world. Because now we have an interchangeable biosimilar insulin that is going to make insulin more affordable, more available for all, and insulin for all is something that is going to change. With this, you need, we need to understand that all that seems, all apples are not the same. Are all biosimilar insulin interchangeable? It is not the case. So, in conclusion, patients with diabetes deserve high quality because that's what we owe to our patients. We are the gatekeepers for the prescriptions. And they provide affordable, acceptable, researchable, creditable, as well as value to patients that is there, and which also has made a change of play for the innovator molecule to come in, to come in ball, to look at the play. Why didn't they do it before? Biosimilar has made them do it today. And that is where biosimilar should be credited for the future. With that, I end my talk. Thank you so much, Manoj.